Steve's just an average Joe looking for a decent bottle of wine for under the price of a six-pack. And now, for the first time ever, you can watch Steve and his remarkable shadow as they throw down... Steve's $10 Wine Challenge! Challenge 7, The Box Wine Show. Hi, welcome to the first video version of Steve's $10 Wine Challenge. I'm Steve and this is what I look like. Today it's the box wine show, and we're gonna start out by sampling a box wine on the fly. Usually we sample our wines ahead of time, we have time to ruminate on them a little bit. This time we're gonna do it straight on up. So what do we got here? We got Casarsa Vineyards Merlot, a medium bodied soft Merlot, uh, three liters in a box. And uh, let's see here, I'll decant a little bit here. Mmm, let it breathe a minute to sniff the spigot. Mmm, doesn't smell corked. Let's see here. Mmm. Mmm. Smells a little uh, chemical-like. Jesus. It's just ghastly. It's just ghastly. Let me try again. Oh, Jesus, it's just awful. It's just disgusting. Where the, where the hell is this stuff from? Let's see here. Um, well, of course, they've got a picture of Italy on the back. I don't know if it's from Italy, though. Um, no, it's from Ripon, California, from Universal Wine Network. Oh, no, it's imported from them. Um... It's from northeastern Italy. It's Italian. How about that? What a shame. The uh, the Italians, they're not representing with this Merlot, I gotta tell you. Um, pretty awful. One thing I gotta say, and uh, this sort of destroys the story, but um, the box wine, I paid $9.99 for this. So th this, this is probably pretty telling right there. This qualifies for Steve's $10 wine challenge, and it's not even a bottle. It's a box with three liters of wine in it. So that's, uh, that's four bottles, four bottles of wine. So that works out to $2.50 a bottle. So that's, that's pretty cheap wine. And you know what? I can taste every penny. It's just disgusting. Oh. You know, I, already I can see the, the pain point of the box wine. This, every once in a while I have a really awful bottle of wine and I have to dump it down the drain. Dumping a whole box of wine, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty painful. But anyway, let me just say something about the box wine. And I know I've already sort of pro probably ruined it, and I'm not going to turn you now. I'm not going to convince you. But uh, the, the box wine thing, there's, there's been like a box wine revolution, sort of like the screw cap revolution. And uh, so box wine, it's not just bargain basement swill-like frenzia anymore. No, no, now there's actually fancy pants wine and fancy pants wine that comes in a box. So um, you should know that uh, just because wine is in a box, it doesn't mean that it's swill. Uh, there are advantages to the box wine. Um, the box wine is, uh, is really advantageous if you live alone. Um, when you open a bottle and you can't finish it, what happens? It sits out overnight, gets oxidized, you have some the next night, not quite, a good, not quite as good, is it? Uh, well, the thing with the box wine is it's got this vacuum-packed bladder inside and this, 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 sort of, this sort of tap on it. And, uh, tap. And so what happens is you tap off a glass, you shut it off, no air gets sucked up inside there, and so it doesn't get oxidized. And so you can actually have like one or two glasses of wine at night, and, um, and then you can save the rest and it doesn't oxidize. And so you can keep the thing around for, you know, a couple weeks and, uh, and you know, drink on it and it never really gets that bad. Um, and then uh, another advantage uh, that I learned from my father, who's retired now and really likes his wine, and is a big fan of the of the Franzia box wine, um, it's it's uh, it's helpful for an instructional reason. The wine is in this huge box, and my mother is really unable to monitor just how many giant glasses of wine he's drunk in a, in a single night. Um, and so consider that my married friends. Uh, finally, let's not forget that this box wine stuff is damn economical. Um, so. Another box wine that I had that I would like to talk about is uh, is this Kingfish stuff. This Kingfish stuff I bought for twelve dollars and ninety nine cents, 
And um, and again, that looks like it's over ten dollars. Steve's ten dollar wine challenge limit. But again, this is uh, this is four regular seven hundred fifty milliliter bottles, which works out to three dollars and thirty two cents a bottle. So this is the expensive stuff. And um, man, that's cheap ass wine. It's uh, sort of the equivalent of the pony keg for the, uh, you know, for the, for the wine drinking set. So um, anyway, I've had the really crappy stuff. Um, the Franzia, by the way, the Franzia stuff, this stuff was, uh, I think this is $13 and this is five liters. Five liters, how many bottles is that? I, I, that's five liters, I don't even know how many bottles that is. Seven? Anyway, this works out to a ridiculously cheap, I don't, I don't, it's, it's, it's unfathomable, it's pennies. Pennies a bottle. <laughs> and you know, that stuff is not, not so bad. It's, it's better than this, uh, this horrible stuff I was hoping to impress you with. <laughs> um, so anyway, I got this, this rockfish stuff, right? So we're, we're talking about the rockfish now. The rockfish is a California Shiraz. Uh, and uh, let's see, what year is this stuff? Well, it's from 2004. And uh, like I said, this works out to the, like three dollars and thirty-two cents. And uh, when I tried this, um, I also found that you know when I first poured it out, there was this big sort of alcoholic nose when you first pour it, and it tastes like alcohol. And when I first poured it out, I was like, oh my god, this is just disgusting. So I had to let it breathe for a while. And then after I let it breathe, then it tasted sort of like your typical cheap Aussie Shiraz, which I've told you was a solid product. And um, I have to say, this is it's probably the best $3.32 bottle of wine I've ever had. But um, this whole sort of having to let it breathe thing, um, when I went for my second glass, I really learned that the great virtue of the box wine is also its downfall. Because uh, for the same reason that the box wine doesn't breathe, um, that, that, that the box wine doesn't get oxidized, um, it also doesn't breathe. So you pour out a glass and it's not like a bottle where the thing has been breathing and has been oxidizing and all the weird funky off flavors are off gassing. It's all sealed up in there and you, and you pour a new one and after you got used to the other glass and it was tasting pretty good, you pour out a fresh one and the fresh one is all nasty again. And so you got to let it breathe again. So um, my suggestion to you, if you have the box wine, is that you, uh, you know, you decant a big old mason jar of the crap and you let the stuff sort of breathe or, or, you know, sort of sort of hose out as much as you think you can swill in a single night and then, you know, let it breathe for a couple hours, then come back to it and, and you know, pour it in a glass. Um, and uh, if you do that, then it's actually pretty good. Uh, let's see here. The lie on the back of the bottle here, or the kingfish. Huh. And you know, the, the other downside of the box wine is, you know, lie on the back of the bottle, it's lie on the back of the box. And you know, it's a pretty big box and so they can really lie for a long time. 